Let's talk about auction versus buy it now. A very crucial topic I've been asked millions of times, and we're gonna break it down in this video. It's gonna be a long one, stay around for the whole thing. There'll be timestamps down below. Any other questions you have regarding this topic, feel free to comment. Any other videos, if you have another video idea that you want me to do, or something you want me to elaborate on, I'm more than happy to make another video in conjunction to this. We can work together and we can figure out whether auction or buy it now is the best for you and the items you currently have and you're wanting to sell on eBay. We'll start with auctions first and then we'll go into buy it now and we'll break down to every single thing I think it's really good about auctions and all the things I think are really bad about auctions. So the first thing about auctions that are really good is you get to set the price. So we'll write this here. Price. Now don't hate on my writing. I'm only doing my best. I'm not really good at writing, but I'm trying. Now, the price. What's really important about this is you kind of get to dictate how much you want to sell things for. So a lot of the things I'm going to be saying here are the things that I do or that I see other people who do a lot of auctions. Now, the main thing with auctions is most people start them at 99 cents or $1. So we can write that here. They set them as 99 cents. And now why do they do 99 cents? It just starts really low. And if you have an item that usually sells around like what, 20 to 50 to $100, something like more than 99 cents, it's going to gain traction and it's going to get more views write that here, right? It's going to get more views. It's going to get more bids. And what does that mean? More traffic. So this thing here, one of the most important things about auction is they get more traffic than the buy it now. The amount of traffic on auctions on eBay is absolutely insane. So 99 cent starts means you get more views and more bids. And then that turns into more traffic. But the problem with this is it can go very poorly sometimes. Sometimes grab a little red pen sometimes 99 cents starts means you can get low price and we'll get into that later on but that's one thing you have to really watch out with 99 cents starting but it gets a lot more views because it starts at 99 cents people can search lowest listing or they go to the new list and they see something for a dollar and like oh maybe i'll save that my bid on it might be able to get a deal but if you start things at 99 cents they might go for a lot of price Here's what I do with auctions. I usually start my auctions around the price of what the item costs me. And a lot of my items, you know, a lot of, I sell a lot of PSA graded cards, a bunch of PSA graded Pokemon cards. And most of that cost me around $25 Australian. So I start my auctions at $25. Now, it being an auction, I still get a lot of views and I might get a few more bids. But there are a lot of my items that might end up being a higher price if I start them lower. But a lot of my items that might end up being a lower price if I start them at 99 cents. Maybe they'll go for 15 to 25. The best thing about auctions, if it doesn't sell, well, you just have to relist it. It's not really that bad. You know, a lot of people, they kind of get kind of scared. If they really want to sell something really fast, auctions, maybe just you got to be careful the items you're buying and trying to sell if it's not going to sell one, two, three, four times on auction. But... I start my auctions at around $25 just so I can make sure I get my cost back. It's not the end of the world if I get, maybe they go for a little bit more. Auctions are great for pushing volume. So I'll write that here. Auctions are great for pushing volume. Write these things down because I'm going to be rubbing it out afterwards. So this is pretty much, you get to set the price with your auction and it's really great. It's, it's just basically one of the best things. You get to control it. You can use it like a timed buy it now basically, but you can take advantage of the auction traffic because I do believe that on eBay, maybe even 80% of the people looking for things to buy, they don't even look at buy now listings. They mainly just look at the auction listings. So setting the price super important with the auctions. Okay, let's move on now. The second thing really good about auctions is the time. You guessed it right, the time. So you get to set the time of the auctions. You get to set whether you do it for one day, don't do that, whether you do it for three days, not too bad. I think there's five days, it's kind of weird. Seven and then 10 days. I think seven days is the perfect point for an auction. 10 days, I don't really see that much issue. Like it, you kind of just waiting like another three days for no real reason. But the, the slower you get, like the less time, it's not really that good of an idea. You have an auction up for 24 hours. Maybe some people only look at eBay once a week and your kind of auction is something that they want. So seven days is really good for everyone that just might not use eBay that much and it just gets as many eyes as possible. Now, the best thing about time, this one here, is you get to set the date. Here's what I do. I, I, I put my auctions on Saturday. So sat, ooh, that's a really bad writing, but I put mine on Saturday. So when they sell within the seven day time frame, I have Sunday and then Monday to ship them out. So they have to be out into the post office by Monday afternoon. And I get a full day extra just to pack all my auctions 
and just send them so I have a seven day break. I think it's really good just to end your items on Saturday, just so you get that day extra and you can pack them all. It gives buyers another day to wait to pay. You know, you can send all of the invoices. It's not stressful. You don't end them on like Wednesday night and you wake up Thursday morning and people have to go to work and people have to do this and people have to go everywhere. It's just not really, in my experience over my last, what, almost decade on eBay, ending your auctions on Saturday night, you know, 7 to 10 p.m. is one of the best things because you have all Sunday, people can wake up, be refreshed, and that's pretty good. Number three, save time and space. What I mean by this, you, you know, you're probably thinking, how do you save time using auctions, Steve? Well, you only got to do the listing once. You can relist it as many times as you want, so that's a really beneficial thing. And you've got to save space. When you auction stuff off, let's say you have a whole box of stuff you put together, no matter what you auction, it doesn't have to be Pokemon cards, it can be literally anything, video games, watches, your old clothes, your old shoes, anything on eBay you can sell, it's literally huge. Your plushies, even this whiteboard I could probably sell on eBay auction. It saves space, you don't have to deal with inventory management, you don't have to set places in your, in your house or in your storage room or anything like that, you don't have to have like spaces just for all the stuff because in a week's time you do a seven day auction, that stuff's gone. So it's really good. Auctions is great for people that have very minimal space and they don't want to hold an inventory, they don't want to manage an inventory, all the other things. Auction is really great for saving time and space. The fourth reason why I think auctions are really good is you get to manage your store growth. All right, store growth. Let's write that down here. Now, what does this mean? What do you think at home, huh? What do you think? You don't know? Okay. Well, manage your store growth is if you start with zero feedback, and you haven't sold anything, your, your buyer account and selling account on eBay, you get to list 40 items for sale. And if you're not really that good at selling, you don't know the prices of things, you don't really know what to go, and you have had the items for a long time and you don't really care what things sell for, but you still wanna get things sold and you wanna understand the process about eBay, auction's the best thing. If you have some spare collectibles lying around, you got some spare Pokemon cards lying around, it really helps you grow your store and get those feedback numbers up. Because, you know, you get to guarantee the sale. You get to, you know, you put five things on auction in your first week. You have an idea. They all sell. You ship them out to the buyer. You figure out the shipping process. All these other things is really good for store growth. It lets you learn every step of the way much faster compared to someone who just starts their store only with buy it now, which isn't a bad thing to do. You can start your store only with buy it now. But if you start them with auction, it forces the sale. You get used to packing items. You get used to shipping items. You get used to dealing with buyers. Sometimes you get so many more questions, views, traffic, all with auctions that you would never normally get with buy it now because it's a much slower thing buy it now. But everything with auctions is so much faster. So you just learn a lot faster. And I think auctions are the great thing to do for someone starting that's new because it just helps you grow your store so much faster. So we talked about all the good things about auction. Let's talk about the bad things. We'll get rid of all this great information. What do you think is a bad thing that happens during auction? If you've already done some before, what's happened to you? There's a lot of things with auctions that are super common. We're going to use a red pen for the bad stuff. Lots of auctions are things that happen to everyone, whoever sold on eBay, that's super common. What is it? That's right. Unpaid items. Yep. That stuff, that sucks. This, I'm going to put a little thing on it. This is super, super common with auctions. Sometimes people scroll through their phone, they accidentally bid. They bid too much. They get caught up in the moment, the excitement. I've, it's, I have so many unpaid items whenever I do auctions. I'd say maybe 10% of them. It really sucks. It's getting better on eBay over the years. They've, they've given sellers ways to deal with people who don't pay for their items. There's ways to block them. So if you go to your, your seller hub and then somewhere around there, there's a page called Block Bidders or it's called the Buy Requirements tab. And I'll put the links in the description or if you want to message me on Instagram, I'll help you all like find all that stuff out. What I do is I block people that have had two unpaid item strikes in the last six months. I think that's a really great thing. It's reduced my unpaid items greatly. I think I only had some auctions end recently. I had 150 items auctioned and 24 hours after the sale, I think there's around seven items left and that's really good. That's way lower than 10% I'd usually get. And maybe those people just haven't been back to the computers or their phones yet and they're not ready to pay. So I think blocking buyers that have two unpaid item strikes in the last six months is a very good thing. It's unfortunate for the people who do things accidentally or they bid too much and everything, but you have to just learn as you go as a buyer and you just can't mess and waste seller's time. So this is a super, super important thing is unpaid items. And as well with unpaid items, you need to make sure if someone doesn't pay for your auction, talk to them, send them a message saying, hey, are you going to pay for this? Hey, I'm ready to ship your item. I'd love to ship this out tomorrow. When will you pay? 
hey, do you need more time? Because if it's a buyer that's bought off you regularly or if it's someone that you know, or if it's someone in the same community as you, remember everyone's human, things happen. People, has happened many times, people message me, I went to the hospital, something happened to my family member, something happened to my kid, I didn't mean to bid on this, I've ran out of money, I have an unexpected bill. All those things are completely human. It's up to you whether you wanna do this or not, but unpaid item strike is what you can use afterwards if you haven't come to a deal and someone says they don't want to pay or they just flat out ignore you ebay is a buyer and seller atmosphere everyone needs to work together for it to work so i do unpaid item strikes on absolutely everyone unless the unless they bought off me regularly or they bought off me before and like the reasoning why they don't want to buy the item is completely justified but there's very few things in this world that are ever justified if you commit to buying my item and you don't buy it not only are you going to waste my time, you're going to waste everyone else's time who wants to buy it. So you have to unpaid item strike. And how you do that is when you go into your waiting items payment, there's a little button. You click on the little down arrow and it's like cancel sale. And this won't happen until four days have passed. And after four days, you click on the drop box and one of the things says buyer hasn't paid or buyer hasn't paid for the item yet. Something like that right at the top. You click that and you go cancel item. Sometimes I'll let you relist it at the same time, so feel free to do that or just keep it down and you can relist it when you're ready to do your next auction block again. Another really bad thing with auctions are lower price. Now, it, a lot of items that we have as eBay sellers are not very special. They are just normal, everyday, common items and that's kind of why we own, own them. I mean, it's very rare that you ever see anyone own a uh, like, significant amount of rare items that they want to sell. So with auctions, the really bad thing is, that's a really weird W, lower price. If you have an item that is already listed on eBay under buy it now and someone else has it, it's almost guaranteed that your item will go for a lower price than someone else's buy it now if you're auctioning it off. And that's completely fine. As long as you understand what you paid for the item and understand how much the item cost you, maybe even do what I do, and I just start my items a little bit at the cost price. So there's basically no way I can lose. And if it doesn't sell, I'll just relist it and sell it another time. But with the auctions, they pretty much always go a lower price than current buy it nows. Because usually buy it nows are always a little bit higher than market price or at the market price. Because they wouldn't be available if they were lower than the market price. Because someone would have bought them now, right? Does that make sense? So auctions, they get lower price pretty much guaranteed every single time. But it's not that much lower. Like you might have an item that's like $100 buy it now. And your auction might go between $70 and $100. That's perfectly fine as long as you understand how much you paid for it. You're not too emotionally invested and you need to understand that you basically guaranteed your sale and you got the money back and you got your money in and you're ready to go reinvest and buy some more stuff for your business. It's fine to have a lower price sometimes. That's enough about auctions. Let's talk about buy it now. The best thing about buy it now is you can build your own store. You can build your own identity. So we can focus on this thing right here. You can focus on your store, your shop, your identity. What I've done with my store, I've had my store is the same name as my Instagram, the same name as my website. I've kind of linked everything together, same name as my YouTube. It's really good. And now when people go and buy stuff off me, they can see I have a whole bunch of buy it now listings, all a part of my store. I, if this is something that you're looking to do, you know, you're not really looking just to fast sell as many things as possible. Also, like I said earlier, the buy it nows tend to get a higher price. You set at the market or a little bit above. That's really good for building your own store, being able to offer certain items to people. If you have stuff that's niche that doesn't do well on auction, it's really good. It builds your own store and we'll get into the rest. The second thing with buy it now listings is, you know what it is? Are you going to tell me? It is price. Really good thing with buy it now listings is you get to set the price. No one else can pay you less for your item unless they use best offer or something like that. But no one else can take your item from you on eBay, on your website, on Instagram, on anywhere you want, on Facebook, wherever you're selling, e like Poshmark or Gumtree or Craigslist, anything. You get to set the price with a buy it now listing. You get to set the price. It's the best thing. So for an informed seller that researches things, they know the market price, they know their item inside and out, you get to set the price and it's the best thing possible. This can also be your worst enemy. You can maybe be too attached to the price. Maybe you go to list buy it now and you're like, man, well, this item's only $70. I feel it's like it's $150 and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to choose to auction your item and maybe sell it for less than the 70. But if you think it's worth 150, you can set your own price at 150. It might take a while to sell. You'll have to wait for the 70s, 80s, 90s, all to sell out. But eventually you've already done the job of listing the item, buy it now. 
Your item will be the lowest price at 150. It's a really good item and everyone wants it. So you can use that as your advantage. But yeah, with the buy it nows, you get to set the price, which is the greatest thing ever. Another great thing with setting the price is you get paid instantly. If your item sells, you get instant payment. Ooh, write these down. I'm terrible at writing, it's so bad. But instant payment, let's draw a dollar sign. Oh my God. It's like an Australian dollar sign, maybe. <laughs> oh, what am I doing with my life? Uh, so, instant payment. Really good thing about buy it now listings is if you don't have best offer and you have no way for people to offer and you have instant payment required on your items, whenever you sell something and it pops up in your phone, item sold, there's no time wasting whatsoever. You have your price, they get to buy it, you get instant payment, instant gratification, and it's awesome. This also works with the time. Now with auctions, I mentioned one to seven days is basically, or one to 10 days is when you can set the set the time for the auction to end. With buy it now, if your item's well-priced enough and you know, you're a little bit under the market price and you've done your research, you've done everything, and it's a $50, $50 item, and you only really want to get $40 for it, you put it up for 40, there's a chance that this sells within 24 hours if you've got a really good item. And it's really nice, you get instant payment, you can go out and buy some more stuff, it'll get added to your eBay payouts, you can even get paid out the next day these days. It's really nice, so instant payment, you can set your own price. Let's talk about the bad things about buy it now. This is pretty much the most dreaded thing ever when it comes to listing items on eBay. It is the most time consuming, it is the most, it, it is most, most worst, most ever. It, I, look, look. I'm still these days, I've been doing this for almost a decade. I still struggle at this, but let's, do you know what it is? You, know, you don't know what it is? But I still struggle at this. I'm gonna block this. I'm not gonna say what it is until I leave the whiteboard. Really bad thing about buy it now listings. Inventory management. <laughs> I need to take some writing lessons, but this is a terrible, terrible thing. I'm still trying to grasp with it. It's different for everyone. You got 10 items for sale. It's pretty easy to do. You work your way up to 100 items for sale. It gets a little bit harder. You work your way up to 1,000 items for sale. It gets even harder. On my eBay stores, I have roughly 6,000 items, I think, listed right now. It's a lot of work. Just in itself of managing the inventory, adding new inventory in, trying to find the old inventory when you're selling it. All these other things when someone buys an item off you, if they want a picture of an item, you've got to go through the boxes, your binders, your folders, everything. It's really hard inventory management. It's something you get, you don't, it doesn't get swamped on you though. That's the best thing. When you start on eBay and you only have zero items, it's not a bad thing. You list one item, you put it somewhere. You list two items, you put it next to the one item. And you grow and grow and you can change it as you go. And we'll go into it in other videos where we'll discuss inventory management and the best thing to do for trading cards. But this goes for anything on eBay. But inventory management, really rough thing with buy it nows. But you will learn over time how to make it better. I'm going to explain how my store, Pokemon Steven, uses auctions and buy it nows in conjunction together. Sometimes my auction things sell for lower, but that can also be used to benefit my buy it now listings and I'll explain why. So let's say I have auctions and I have buy it now. I have roughly, I think 3,000 buy it now listings and whenever I do auctions, I do around 100 at a time. When I auction items, I never auction anything unique. I never auction anything that's really hard to get. It's usually always just stuff that's really easy, replenishable, I have multiple copies, stuff that I can just get really easy and I'm not too stressed about this final sale price. I already told you I start my auctions at the start price of how much it costs me. So it's generally just not that bad for me ever to do auctions at starting 100 items. And you know, I, at the minimum I get all my costs back and I'm gonna tell you all the benefits I get from them. So I do 100 auctions, right? So that's 100 sales. This is really good. So you get 100 guaranteed sales. That's, my items aren't complete. I've been doing this for a while, so my items aren't complete, like really bad, no one wants them. Every single time all my items get a bid. So I basically just guaranteed 100 sales to my store. What does it mean? 100 potential feedback. One of the best things that ever on eBay, the best thing ever to get a feedback. It feels great. I'm at like 6,000 now, it's been awesome. Whenever someone buys more than one item, let's say they buy 10 items, you only get one feedback from that. End of the day, one feedback is better than no feedback. So I get to do 100 auctions, I get sales, feedback. What's the next thing I get? Whoop, you guessed it. I said the T word, traffic. 
We have traffic, right? How do I use the traffic to benefit my store? Here's what happens. On eBay, you have these things called listing impressions and page views. If you go into your traffic tab on eBay, it'll tell you all about that stuff. If you have a store subscription, I think you have to have a store to go to the traffic tab, but maybe you don't anymore and that's pretty great if you don't. But if you don't have a store, I suggest getting one. We'll break that down in another video. But traffic, we get impressions. So when I do 100 auctions on eBay, I sell graded Pokemon cards. I'm going to say on an estimate roughly 2 million impressions when I do my auction on eBay. An impression is when someone just scrolling on your phone and the item just pops up and someone scrolls past it. So during one week of me auctioning 100 graded Pokemon cards on eBay and I sell niche stuff. I only sell Japanese graded cards. Other people, they might sell basketball cards or English Pokemon cards or t-shirts, socks, shoes. It's different for everyone and maybe some categories are huge, but Pokemon's really popular for me. So we get a lot of impressions. I get roughly 2 million impressions. And I think it's really hard because because I have to work it out between my buy it now and my auctions, but I get around 10,000 page views. So 10,000 people click on my auctions during the one week that I have them for sale. And that is nuts. You are just, I'm putting 100 cards out there for the cost. So when I auction, I'm thinking about it in a different way. I'm not trying to make money. I'm trying to generate sales, feedback, and traffic. So I got 2 million impressions, 10,000 more people get my store, and then 100 potential customers get to receive a package from me, and they get to see how good I package an item. They get to see my cool little business card. They get to see the, the care. They get the next day shipping, you know, so I have one day shipping on my auctions as well. One day ship. This is everything I do. This is very important stuff. I have one day shipping on my auctions and that's why I end mine on Saturday and on Sunday I pack them so Monday they're ready to go and I can take them to the post office. You see where I'm going with this? It all works in transition. But eBay is very special. When eBay sees that you get 100 sales, what they do is they say, hey, this guy's selling so much, we're gonna give him more traffic for his buy now listings because he's being a great seller. He's selling heaps, he's making us money because that's what eBay wants. eBay wants to make money. This is all about making money, unfortunately. But the sales give my buy it now listings. And even now, I'm gonna say just from this weekend, I had 150 items sell in auction. I went a little bit more this time. And with 150 items on auction, usually I sell roughly 10 items a day, 10 to 15 on eBay. I'm not a very fast seller, but I, like, I'm, I'm generally a little bit above market price but I worked some deals out, I got some good stuff, I got some niche stuff. So 10 items a day, 10 to 15 here and there. I sold 37 items today, buy it now on eBay. And that's not normal and that only generally happens right after I do my auctions because of all the extra traffic from the auctions, go to my buy it now and then people see my store more and everyone that sees this 10,000 page views knows that my store's there. These people haven't even received their package. They don't even know how good of a seller I am because they do one day and they get their items in one day. Does that make sense? It all works within each other. I should, I should charge you money for this. This is, this is, oh my God. That's a better dollar sign. This is big money advice. So if you want to send me a few dollars for this, I'll be I'd really, really appreciated. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. All right. I'm guessing if you made it this far into the video, you really deserve it. You deserve all this advice. So this is the next part that's super important with your auction or buy now listing is the, I'm just going to put R E Q the Rex. The listing requirements, okay? The listing requirements for auction and buy it now is the same. You need to pay attention to your item pet. Like with auctions, this is what's more important with auctions. Okay, they're the same, but this is what's more important with auctions. I've already, this just clicked in my head. So what's more important with auction are the photos and title. And what's more important with buy it now is the description. They're all super important, 10 out of 10 things you need to have. But on auctions, there are so many of them, especially within the Pokemon niche that I'm in, the Pokemon selling, Pokemon cards, maybe your niche, if you're looking at this and you don't even sell cards, you don't sell Pokemon cards, you sell hats, shoes, shorts, doors, whiteboards, whatever else. But in us, there are so many things, there's hundreds of thousands of auctions every month. Photos and title are the most important things. Nobody reads condition description, nobody reads the actual description, nobody pays attention to anything other than what's in the photos and what's in the title. And if your photo and title isn't accurately represented, if you have a photo that has 10 cards in it and you write the description, you only get one of the 10 cards, they're gonna complain. No one reads the description. So I'm just gonna show you know, auctions, 
you still should have a description just to be like, message me for combined shipping, message me for this. I'm always here for you if you want more photos, everything else you normally put in, but no one's gonna read that anyway. People tend to read that on Buy It Now because they have time. They're scrolling through Buy It Now. They're just looking through on their phones, on their computer, on their mouse and keyboard, all that other stuff. Both of this really important for both, but photos and titles for auctions definitely way more important than anything than you could ever imagine. Okay, Steve, you've described auctions and Buy It Now, but should I do auctions and Buy It Now? I still don't know. Well, auctions at the end of the day, they're really good for selling if you want your money fast. You don't want to do too much effort in price research. You just want a guaranteed sale. You don't want to go to the post office every day, shipping one or two things and all these other parts to go to running an eBay store. You just want to do one big auction, sell all your items. Auction is really good for you. If it's just really good once a week going to the, going to the post office, don't have to manage an inventory. But if you're a seller that wants to take things, I'm going to say this, it might hurt your feelings. You want to take things a little bit more seriously. You list them by it now. You take more respect and time with your items. You inventorize them properly. You build your brand. You go on Instagram. You help people out that don't know what to do. It's really important, by the way. So at the end of the day, they both work. I really like using both of them in conjunction with each other, like I explained, but that's what I would advise for someone that is getting into this and fast money saves you time, don't have to manage things. But as you sell a few more things on auction, your money issues might go away or maybe you have not enough items to sell and you just want to sell a few but you don't want to sell them low because your auction prices do go lower you tend to go more to buy it now as you become more of a professional or a kind of more serious seller both still pretty good never don't use one or the either because you can definitely benefit from both thanks for watching i hope you really enjoyed my auctions versus buy it now discussion it was a bit loosey-goosey i'm not feeling too great i just got off the flu the last two weeks i know i look like crap so thanks for not mentioning it but if you have any comments and you have any things you think I didn't cover too great or you have any just questions or you want to just ask a question you might not even think I would know, just put it down in the comments. There were so many experts and there's so many great people that watch my videos. We're all learning together. We're all a big community. So just put it in there. Someone else will answer it if it's not me. We'll work together. If you see someone's questions in the comments, just answer them. Help them out. Work with me. Work with everyone together. We can build this up. And we can give as much information to people that want to learn as much as possible. So... Thanks for watching. If you like the whiteboard videos, let me know. We'll get into doing more of them. Have a great day and thanks for watching the video.